Okay, so we're going to mark this semester. So you prepare for exams. Prepare very well for exams. A mother's proposal appeared in 1729. A mother's proposal appeared in 1729. It is also in the form of prose, also prose, and it's also a satire. It's also prose, it's prose, and it's also satire. It can be read as a juvenilian satire. It can also be read as a manipian satire. The background to this work is the, work, the background to this work lies in Irish poverty. The poverty of the Irish people. Or the extreme poverty that first Irish people at this time in history, especially seen as being aggravated by their relationship with England, which was more or less uh, seen as the overlord at this time. Another background to, another background information that is important in understanding, to understanding this work is The explosion of population, the explosion of population in Dublin, even in England at this time. In Dublin, of course, Northern Swift was Irish, right? The explosion of population and the consequences of that explosion of uh, in population on in terms of how it stretches existing amenities, like housing and other amenities. So this explosion in population was made possible by rural urban migration, which is still a phenomenon to this day people going to the cities because they felt that there were more opportunities in the cities. And then finding out like that opportunities are limited, the jobs do not go around, and they had to settle for a lesser existence in the city live in places that do not glorify their humanity, like living in the slums. So slums were created at this time because of limitations in housing. Crime rates skyrocketed and humanity deemed in the hearts of people. People were more carnivorous. They can eat each other whether economically or otherwise, okay? Morality was low. People could now um, have children out of wedlock. In fact, the general economic situation of Ireland this time was so bad that some people were leaving as indentured laborers to the Americas and other parts of the world where they could make a livelihood. 
All right, because there were limited opportunities, people resorted to crime to survive. People stole to survive. People killed, robbed to survive. So that was a humanity deemed in the hearts of people. In fact, we are told that mothers could drown their babies so they could, they could sell the clothes that the baby wears to buy drinks. It was so bad. So in the midst of these economic woes, there were there were in the midst of these economic wars, there were intellectuals who wrote pamphlets proffering solutions, different forms of solutions to the problems, to the economic problems. Of course, the prisons were filled up. And at a point, some of the prisoners were sent abroad to go and start, as form of punishment, you could be sent abroad to a place like Australia to go and start life there, depending on the nature of your crime. It was that bad. So in this, in this um, satire, in this work, in Mother's Proposal, Swift is satirizing some of the intellectuals whose ideas he did not like on how to turn the economic situations in England around or in hell and around. Of course, you should note that there was a time when the word Irish was associated with poverty. So that to say Irish poverty would be theological be a tautology. So uh, Swift satirizes those intellectuals who proposed ideas I did not like on how the economic situation in Ireland could be reversed and how England should relate with Ireland to lift some of the oppressive measures on Ellen. He also satirized the tendency for anybody with limited knowledge, with little knowledge, to write books and prefer and profess solutions to societies, societal problems. So in this, in this in this pamphlet, Swift uses sustained irony. Swift uses sustained irony, hyperbole, satire. Lampoon and paralepsis as techniques and style. We try techniques and style in dramatizing to us the in human nature, in human situation the Irish people were put to. 
Pope uh, Swift uses sustained irony, hyperbole, satire, lampoon, and paralepsis to dramatize to us the inhumane situation the Irish people were made to go through at this time. The title of the work itself is ironic a modest proposal, because what it actually proposes is not, not modest at all. What it actually proposes is not modest at all. So the title of the work, A Modest Proposal, is actually ironic. So the work text, the 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 work text, the the structure, the tone and the style of pamphlets on social engineering, how to change society. The work text, the structure, and the style of the existing pamphlets on social engineering, how the other writers usually write to. Um, Proper solutions to societal problems. This is the, the same style that Swift is using in writing a modest proposal. All right? Except that his own, his own writing is, is dominated by irony. It's ironic. Pope aims to solve the problem of over overpopulation in Dublin and probably in England too. And who are those that overpopulate the city? The poor. The poor and the hungry. They are the ones who constitute um, a nuisance to the city. So he begins by saying that he's bothered by the sight of these women who are carrying children on their backs with many other children following them around, begging in the city. But he wants to solve this problem of beggars in the city because they constitute a nuisance to society. They are the ones who are populating the city because their sight is not loved, does not make the city look good. So how do we solve the problem? Swift says we can solve the problem by, by selling off some of these children to be used as meat in the houses of the rich. That can be seen in the long title of the, of the work. That can be seen in the long title of the work. A modest proposal. A modest proposal for preventing the children of poor people from being a burden to their parents or country and for making them beneficial to the public. A modest proposal for preventing the children of poor people from being a burden to their parents or country and for making them beneficial to the public. That's a long title of a modest proposal. So when you look at it, you see that the proposal is not modest at all. It is interesting that Pope uh, Swift goes about this proposal using facts and figures, like a good statistician. For instance, he says that Ireland has 1.5 million people. 
It says that Ellen has 1.5 million people. And that 200,000 women are active in bearing children. And that out of these 200,000, 30,000 couples are able to take care of the children. So if 200,000 uh, women are bearing children, and only 30,000 are able to take care of the children, even says he's exaggerating the figure, that it could be more, it could be less, who cannot take care of that, or who can take care of their children. So we have 170,000 um, 70, 70, couples or women who have children that they cannot cater for. They have to go around the street begging. Please, money for my child, money for my child, money to feed my child, and they consider a nuisance in the city. So it's left with 170,000, all right? And so out of this, he subtracts 50,000 for those whose children will die through miscarriage or disease or by accident. He's being very, very, very scientific about it. Okay, 50,000 will likely die because, um, through miscarriage, one of, some of these babies will die through miscarriage, 50,000. Some of them will die through disease, or part of them will die through accidents in a year. All right? Now he's left with 120,000 children. Okay? So it is this 120,000 children that he wants to work with. So he says... Out of 120,000 children are very competent, 20,000 should be reserved for growth and reproduction. It will keep us 20,000 children who will grow up and bring up more children for the industry. While the remaining 100,000 should be sold to the rich gentry of the kingdom at a year old to be used for food. Since society cannot take care of its, of its children, all right? Since society cannot take care of his children, they should um, just eat them, all right? Make good economic use of them, all right? And he goes on to enumerate the economic benefits and other benefits that this kind of project will bring about. Now, what Swift does here is to make us angry, but in a very imaginative way at how we have treated ourselves our fellow human beings, especially the vulnerable members of society, without being able to take care of them, because um, children are supposed to be taken care of by the government and by the parents, most importantly. These children will be sold for 10 shillings each to the rich and the powerful. Of course, in the, in the work, it says that the rich have already eaten the parents of these children, so why not eat the child? They have eaten their parents economically, right? So why don't you just eat the child at once, okay? Another thing that you notice in this um, work is appeal to authority. He's always saying that some of the things he knows were told to him by certain people who, who are in a better position to know better than him, right? For instance, he says, I have been assured by a very knowing American of my acquaintance in London, that a young, healthy child, well nursed, is at a year old a most delicious, nourishing, and wholesome food, whether stewed, roasted, baked, or boiled. All right? That a very knowing American acquaintance of his, somebody, some, uh, somebody from America that he knows, is very knowledgeable, has told him. That means he has experienced it. Okay? That a young child wellness is at the year old the most delicious, nourishing, and wholesome food, whether stewed, where I want to put it, make it, use it to make stew, roasted, where I want to bake it, where I want to boil it, right? It will still be good food. So, in the work, he uses irony, he uses irony in talking about, in proposing this cannibalism, all right? But what he proposes is cannibalism. 
um, there is already a metaphoric cannibalism in society. So why don't we take it out to the literal uh, sphere? All right? We're already eating each other alive economically and politically and religiously. So why don't we eat each other in reality? All right? The, that means the rich have been eating the poor. Especially the rich and the powerful landlords in England who are called absentees in Ireland. And then he uses paralypsis. Uses paralypsis to, to actually to give the actual solutions to the economic problem. All right? And paralypsis is spelled P A R A L I P S I S. Paralypsis. All right? It is a figure of speech in which you mention something by saying that you don't want to mention it. All right? That's paralysis. P A R A. P A R A L I P S I S. That's how you spell it. P A R A L I P S I S. Paralysis. It's a big it's a figure of speech in which one says something by saying that I don't want to say it. Okay? You say something by saying that you want, don't want to say, for instance, I don't want to talk about poverty. I don't even want to mention poverty in Nigeria. I don't want to even talk about corruption in Nigeria, but you've already talked about it. That's paralysis. Okay? Politicians use it a lot. Okay? You will talk about the achievement and then we say, let me not even mention this other one that I did in this part. Okay? So that's paralysis. P A R A L I P S I S. So he uses paralysis to point to tell people that to, to um, actually give us the real solutions. He said, let people now come and tell him that the solution lies in taxing the rich. All right? Uh, or that the solution lies in, well, that's actually the solution. All right? Taxing the rich. If you tax the rich, you use the money to help the poor. But in a skewed economic society, the rich are given tax reprieves. So it's like saying they should have taxed the landlords, the absentee landlords at 10 shillings per pound. But he's saying as if it's something that should not be done. Let's not, let not anyone tell me about other expedients like taxing the absentee landlord at 10 shillings per pound. Like making use of goods that are manufactured in, only in our country. That's the solution, but it doesn't present it as a solution, which is still a part of the irony. Or of loving ourselves or loving and loving our country, that's patriotism, would help us. Okay? So this, that's an instance of pal the use of pilots. So I will definitely give um, the text. You can even um, download it on the internet, but it can be printed. I'll print it and give it to you. So when you read, you know this part that's, um, that contains the paralysis, which are the real solutions to the economic problem being stated in the work, right? So, but before then, he has also stated the, the he has also stated ironically the, uh, the benefits of cannibalism, selling these children. For instance, he will bring more money, all right? He will bring, um, it will make people rich, the mothers, of these children will have more money, they will not beg again, right? If they sell each child 10 shillings per year, they will make profit before then they'll go again, all right? Another year, okay? It will even make men to value their women, usually when they are pregnant, because they know that the pregnancy has economic value. It is money that they are carrying, okay? Instead of the current situation whereby the men are kicking the women, but you know that at that point, you know that if you kick the woman, she might miscarry. And that would be a great loss. A loss of 10 shillings. Right? 
So you will make the men to came off for their wife, not beating them up. All right? You will create new um, cultures at, at um, restaurants and taverns and all of that. And among other benefits are estates, um, which you'll read when you get um, the text. So on the whole, on the whole, Pope uses irony, hyperbole, exaggeration, all right? Um, lampoon, lampoon, he uses lampoon to satirize some important um, historical figures of the time, like Sir William Petty, Sir William Petty, P-E-W-T-Y, an English um, economist and physician whose ideas um, Swift did not like. And then he uses satire. He said the work can be read as a juvenile satire. satire. And he uses paralipsis to represent the Irish situation, the poverty, and the solutions, the real solutions. Um, to us. So that is um, a modest proposal and that is where we end our class. Have a great afternoon.